Okay, so back to the topic about GPU lapping. So some time ago I made a very in-depth video about GPU lapping as I was going for full port temperatures with the RTX 3090 Kim pin and I wanted to make the GPU surface as flat as possible to avoid thermal paste cracking as well as I could, which usually occurs somewhere around minus 160, but it depends a lot on the particular graphics card or the particular graphics card GPU. So uh, I was able to get to full pot temperatures for a few times, but it was a never a, but it was never a guarantee. So sometimes it could crack very easily or sometimes it could just run full pot for very long periods of time. So I think the longest time was at least 30 to 45 minutes, but it could have been longer. So uh, I uh, I was never really like uh, fully happy with the end result because I wasn't able to get the full pot temperatures like uh, constantly and when I removed the uh, uh, cooling solution from the GPU the thermal paste spread wasn't actually that good so very often it looked kind of bad like uh, not any better at all compared to what it would be by default so at stock so I wanted to go further uh, in this whole thing and, in a, uh, and instead of using the glass plate which I used previously which I just which I just moved on top of the GPU surface and uh, I couldn't find the very long uh, glass panel which Debao used in his video when he lapped the same graphics card model for uh, Dankarp, another German overclocker. So uh, what I did was that I ordered some uh, water stones from eBay from China. So these are technically uh, lapping stones, mainly used for um, sharpening knives. So, uh, well, these are technically the same as uh, sandpaper, so you can find multiple uh, options when it comes to uh, uh, grit uh, for the, uh, on the actual stones. So, uh, the blue one on top over here is a 2000 grit water stone. And I wanted to use some graphics card model as practice card before trying that thing on the 3090 Kimpin. So if you remember, I showed you that particular uh, 7970 Lightning in that previous video, which I managed to uh, well, make kind of bad. So uh, it didn't really go that well because there was no shim around the GPU surface, so the uh, glass plate wobbled all over the place when I tried to lap that particular uh, GPU. So I decided to use that particular card as practice card before trying that same method on the 3090 Kimpin. And I have that same graphics card over here. And if you look, that particular uh, thermal paste spread on that GPU over there is absolutely perfect. So that's uh, the end result after removing the uh, Tech9 Icon LM2 container for GPUs. So there's next to no thermal paste left on top of the GPU surface. And when I tried the card briefly with just the uh, Tech9 Icon attached in 3D Mark 11 at stock and the stock clock for 7970 Lightning is 1070 megahertz on the uh, GPU. The uh, temperature difference, so the delta temperature between uh, the uh, GPU pot and the GPU itself under load in 3D Mark 11 was only 6 degrees. That's pretty much as best it could ever be. So only 6 degree difference between the pot and the GPU itself while running 3D Mark 11. So uh, considering uh, that's pretty hard to uh, lap because there's no shim anymore around the uh, die, I think my method works just fine. So the key is to move the graphics card itself on top of the water stone and you need to put a lot of pressure behind the GPU itself so that the card doesn't wobble when you move it on top of the uh, stone itself. So uh, I couldn't actually find these stones that well here in Finland, so I had to buy these from eBay from China and I bought three of them. So uh, this one over here is 2000 grit and the underside is 5000 grit. Then uh, currently I have uh, 1500 grit and 4000 grit stones uh, soaking in water at the moment. So once you receive these stones, you need to soak them in water. So at the moment I have those two stones soaking in water uh, in a bucket in my sauna department and I think you should let them to uh, sit in water for at least like 12 hours. This particular stone was uh, 
soaking in water for 18 hours. So I'm not fully like sure what's the minimum time it has to be uh, soaked in water. And then once you have uh, taken it out from the uh, water, you need to lap it because these aren't perfect from the factory or by default. So uh, I used 600 grit and 1200 grit sandpapers to lap the blue part of this water stone. And now after doing the 7970, I used one I used one sheet of 1200 grit sandpaper once again to just uh, uh, even out the water stone and make sure there's no uh, any residues from the previous GPU that could make the end result worse with the 3090 Kim pin. So uh, that's how you have to do it. So uh, based on this result over here, I think it works just fine. So there's a lot more risk in my previous method because you have to be sure that the glass plate, if you move the glass plate on top of the uh, GPU, it can easily like wobble when you move it on top of the GPU. So that's what De Bauer mentioned as well in his video. If you can get a very long uh, glass panel, which he used, then I think that could be the best option possible. But so far, based on this thermal paste spread, I think you cannot really go any better than that. So based on the images, Dan Karp showed me after uh, unmounting his GPU container, that didn't look any better than what I have over here. So this is definitely the best result I've ever had ever with uh, uh, GPU cooling uh, mounting, so to say. So now I will attach the camera onto a tripod and I will try to show you how to do this. But you have to put a lot of pressure behind the GPU itself, just to be sure that the card doesn't move. So remove all of the heat sinks, even the uh, rear I.O. Uh, plate, and make sure that the GPU area is properly cleaned. So you don't get any like thermal paste residues uh, between the GPU and the water stone that could make the lapping process or the lapping result worse. So saying so clean the whole GPU area thoroughly and then I think you should be good to go. So now let's see if I could try to show you how to do this, but I will uh, do my best anyways, but I really want to get this done properly. So uh, I will uh, see if I can show you the actual process, but if not, then I will just look, I will show you how it looks like after the lapping process. Okay, so make sure you have some water ready at hand. So we just pour it on top of the uh, water stone like this. And now we will take the graphics card itself. And I think you can do it both ways. So I actually uh, changed the orientation with the 7970 when I did that one. So now I will just put the Kimping card like this. And you, you will notice that it's very easy that the card starts to wiggle. So you need to put a lot of pressure over here behind the GPU itself. Now we will just move. Oh, sadly, there's some Vaseline on the card, so it's a little bit slippery. But I just want to show you the basic principle of doing this whole method. So you get the idea how to do this. If you want to try this yourself, I mean. So this is pretty much the way I did it. And I think you have to clean the uh, GPU surface quite a lot while doing this. So the same thing as before, just to get as much of the residues off from the GPU so that they don't uh, constantly move between uh, the lapping element, so the stone in this case, and the target ob uh, object, so the GPU. So uh, I'll just keep doing this and once it's all done, I will show you how the end result looks like. Okay, and if you look carefully, you can see that the uh, water stone has removed uh, quite a lot of stuff from this uh, corner over here. And uh, that tells us that this particular uh, corner has been a little bit taller than the rest of the GPU surface. And I can actually confirm this. So uh, when I did uh, multiple mounts with, the, with this uh, graphics card on my uh, Tech9 icon, quite often I had very good contact over here but then very bad contact on the rest of the GPU surface. So now I will just keep doing this. And uh, once we, we can see that all of the uh, GPU surface has turned to uh, grayish, I will stop and then we can do a test mount with 
a GPU container and we can look at the thermal paste spread. So definitely use like a test mount. The thermal paste spread is your best indicator on how good your actual uh, contact is. So I just want to show you how this looks like while I'm doing this and now I'll just keep going and let's see how it looks like after a while. And okay, that's where I'm standing at the moment. So I, uh, I've been doing this for a few hours now and it actually, it's actually taking a lot longer than what I expected. So I really think my original job has been very, very bad because at the moment, when looking at the thermal paste spread after a test mount with an LN2 container, the overall uh, surface looks a lot better. It's still not finished. You can see like a square or like a ball at the center of the GPU. So this small corner over here, plus uh, this part of the GPU is still not done. So uh, I will still keep going with the 2000 grit stone and then I will use the 4000 grit stone to finish the whole surface. I don't think it's absolutely necessary at all to use a very fine uh, grit stone like that, but I just want the surface to be perfect. But so far, when looking at the uh, thermal paste spread, it looks much better than what it was at the beginning. I installed this heatsink over here so that it adds some balance on the graphics card. So I don't have to push that much from the backside of the GPU to keep the graphics card uh, in place. Because obviously this part of the graphics card is much longer and weighs more. Now, uh, once you use the water stone for long periods of time, the uh, surface starts to go worse, obviously it will happen uh, at some point eventually. So uh, now I used 600 grit uh, sandpaper on top of the glass plate and lapped the stone once again. So uh, 600 grit sandpaper seems to be very good for a 2000 grit stone. And after using a few papers, I used uh, 1000 grit sandpaper to finish the stone a little bit. So now it looks quite fresh. So I think this should be good to go to finish the job. And then I will just swap the stone. So uh, this, this particular stone is six centimeters wide. So it fits the 3090 kingpin just fine. So remember this gap over here between these two chokes. So I think the maximum uh, width is uh, like seven centimeters or a, a bit over seven, like seven and a half. So I will obviously link the uh, this particular water stone uh, in the description of this video. So if you want to purchase one or two of these, then uh, uh, just uh, ha you can happily do that. So this particular stone is uh, 2000 grit, the blue one is 2000 grit and the yellow bottom one is 5000 grit. So you could, let's say, uh, purchase two of these and use uh, mainly the 2000 grit side on the other one and the 5000 grit uh, on the other one. So I would always lap the uh, uh, desired stone surface before using them because you cannot always know that are they perfectly flat out of the box, so just saying. So now I'll just clean the thermal paste once again and I will keep going and let's see how well it will turn out. Okay, so I felt the whole process was taking very, very long. So I actually swapped the uh, water stone to this uh, yellow colored uh, 1500 grit one and it went very fast. So uh, 1500 grit shouldn't be too rough in my opinion for a GPU like this, but uh, it was definitely doing much better job than the uh, 2000 grit one that I've already used quite a bit. So if you look at the die itself, it's pretty It's pretty wicked if you ask me. So uh, now The die is already relatively low. There's a very tiny like spot in the uh, Top left corner, but that doesn't really matter at all. So uh, I really would like to stop here So now I will do a test mount with the uh, GPU container, if it rocks, I think it should be pretty awesome. Then uh, I will do uh, the 4000 grit stone tomorrow. So I will be going out and uh, buying some more uh, uh, sandpaper so that I will uh, make sure that the 4000 grit stone will be absolutely flat before I use it on this one. So it's more about uh, polishing from uh, from this point. So I think it's not even needed. So this one should be good to go But I really wouldn't use any uh, like rougher 
uh, grit stone than the 1500 grit. I think uh, Roman or De Bauer, I think he used 40 micron uh, uh, lapping film uh, in his video. And if I'm uh, correct, 40 microns should be pretty much the same thing as like uh, 400 to 500 grit. So that's quite rough for a, a GPU like this. But that explains why he got the whole thing done so quickly. So if you use, let's say, just a 2000 grit from the get-go, that whole process will take a very long time. So just be aware. But yeah, so now I will do a test mount and I will show you the thermal paste spread. And I think that's pretty much it for uh, this part of the video. Okay, and as I suspected, the contact is pretty much perfect. If you look at the uh, GPU surface, there's next to no uh, thermal paste left and uh, we have to uh, we have to remember that the surface of the GPU container might not be 100% 100% perfect either. So uh, based on that, I think that's pretty much as good as it could ever be. So pretty happy. Now just hoping that it works of course and uh, yeah, I think I will uh, the next thing I will do is that I will uh, check the delta temperature between the container and the GPU under load in Port Royal for example before I use the 4000 grit stone but that really using the 4000 grit stone is pretty much just polishing it's not really required that looks absolutely insane if you ask me I have never seen so good thermal paste spread on a GPU ever in my life pretty much and I've been doing this for many many years already that's absolutely insane so uh, yeah, so definitely get these stones. So I really recommend you get this 1500 grit one. Use that for the initial lapping and then you can use some finer one. So I will link both of the stones I used on this video in the description box down below. So uh, I think we could end this video at this point. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed this. I really hope the, this could help you to do this as well if you are interested in GPU lapping. So definitely use this Waterstone method instead of using a, a small uh, a glass plate and move it on top of the GPU. That has a lot of risks. So this one is definitely much more idiot proof way to lap a GPU. So definitely use this. I think you could use the same method the Bao used, but based on these images, this end result is much better than what Dankarp had after De Bauer lapped his GPU. So this is pretty wicked. But yeah, so uh, if, you uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.